topography of the San Rafael Swell creates a sharp ring of jagged cliffs around the rim, leaving only a few paths in and out, and even less that are drivable. Slicing through the north end of the swell is Buckhorn Draw, the main passageway down into the swell from the north. But before we head into the canyon, a quick detour 15 minutes away to the wedge. The wedge has many good campsites and some amazing overlooks worth checking out. The snowmelt from the nearby mountains formed the San Rafael River, which carved out this massive gorge nicknamed the Little Grand Canyon. People say that Capitol Reef is Utah's forgotten national park, but to me the San Rafael Swell is Utah's forgotten national park. It never got the designation of a park or monument, but the beauty and history it contains is easily on par with the rest. The area has been a source of ranching and uranium mining for over a hundred years, and the dirt road through the draw and down to I-70 has always been very well maintained. Even back in the 80s and 90s, my dad was driving us through in a Toyota Camry. And just this spring, they resprayed anti-dust chemicals on the dirt road to stabilize it. Basically, this road is open to anybody in a vehicle who wants to see it. However, the rock reef surrounding the swell is mostly wilderness land, so the usual rule of keep vehicles on the road definitely holds true. This trip I saw one of the ghosts of the desert. A desert bighorn surprised me. I've never seen these guys in the area, wasn't even sure if a herd existed in the swell. Spring is calving time, so keep your distance as much as possible. Try not to disturb them. The more common animal that is often heard instead of seen is the wild burros that roam the high country of the swell. They were introduced around the time of the old Spanish trail, around 1800, along with horses that got loose from passing caravans. Because they're of historical significance, they are in a weird middle ground where they are an introduced species that is outcompeting the native animals like deer and bighorn, but also protected against hunting and killing by law. In the case of the horses, it's at a point where the population is getting too high for what the land can handle, so they're removed by the BLM and put up for adoption. But the population is growing faster than the adoption rate, so the BLM is now in crisis on how to handle them. If you're a horse lover and always wanted to tame and own a wild mustang, get in touch with the BLM. I'm sure they'll be happy to find them a home. Buckhorn Draw is a fantastic example of an oasis in a desert. The surrounding lands are so rugged and harsh, but the water concentrates in the wash, and although it's often dry, the water is just under the surface, helps sustain cottonwood trees and grasses along the canyon bottom. You can see why it has attracted humans through the ages. It's a place of shelter, water, and food in a harsh and unforgiving land. Besides the amazing beauty created by the wash slicing through the reef, Buckhorn Draw contains some amazing history spanning all ages. From top to bottom, the layers of rock forming the swell mark the beginning to the end of the dinosaurs. Driving south down Buckhorn is like traveling back in time. Near the north end of the canyon, there's even a dinosaur track left in the Navajo sandstone alongside the road. Just the one dinosaur track as far as I know. Probably more under the dirt there and maybe a little bit here, but just this guy. I wonder if this was another one of his prints, just a barely a, right there. And then bookending the history of the land, just a few hundred feet north of the dino track, you have the MK tunnels that were part of America's Cold War era. And scattered through the canyon is rock art from thousands of years ago to more recent cowboys and outlaws. Matt Warner was a colorful character in the Old West. At the age of 14 at a dance, he got in a fight and knocked a boy unconscious. Thinking he had killed the boy, he ran away from home, and at the age of 15 he was in his first gunfight. He would switch between cattle wrestling and ranching, with the occasional run-in with the law or outlaws, until his 20s when he abandoned trying to lead a lawful life and joined up with the Robber's Roost gang and Butch Cassidy. Then after killing a man in a gunfight and being tried for murder, he was sentenced to five years in jail. He got an early release on the promise of going straight and obeying the law, ran for office, and became an officer of the peace and sheriff's deputy himself. 
eventually living to the ripe old age of 74 when he finally died in 1938. Going back further, there are multiple examples of native rock art by the Fremont people. The natives usually carved petroglyphs where there was a layer of darker desert varnish, but didn't have modern scaffolding and rarely tall ladders, so it was usually done at eye level and areas that were accessible enough to visit the many days it took to make a petroglyph. Once you know that, you can scan canyons for likely places and often find signs of rock art on your own. But this canyon is easily best known for the large barrier canyon style panel near the south end, the Buckhorn Wash Pictographs. This is the site of the famous Rain Angel figures. Obviously since the culture who made these had faded long before even modern Native American tribes came here, the meaning of these panels is anybody's guess. Although one great idea I heard is that they are painted here because this is where water actually fell. If you look at the cliff above the Rain Angels, you can see the calcium deposits where the water flowed down. Or maybe it was just the artist wanted to integrate the existing natural canvas into looking like lightning above his painting of beings that conjured rain. Who knows? Guesses are all we have. Even the experts only have educated guesses. So make up your own interpretation. It may not be right, but nobody can tell you it's wrong either. Till we invent time travel to go back and ask the people who made them, it's like looking at and interpreting the shapes of clouds. And I think that's what I like most about the really old native rock art. What you see in the symbols and glyphs is a reflection of your own mind. The Barrier Canyon style dates to the late archaic period of the North American cultures, with art dating between 4,000 and 1,500 years ago. Exact dating of the Buckhorn wash panel is difficult because the panel suffered heavy graffiti, which was cleaned up in the mid-1990s. While it looks a thousand times better now, the process makes carbon dating unreliable. Today the panel is still in amazing condition given the massive amount of traffic that passes through here, but please respect the fencing and stay away from the panels. Hopping over a fence for a social media picture brings shame upon you and your family. Don't be that person. And it really goes without saying, but don't carve your name in the rocks. For the natives that made this art, they lived and worshipped here for generations. They weren't just tourists stopping for 15 minutes and leaving graffiti. If you feel a connection with them and really want to leave a mark the way they did, paint the walls of your home with art, hang pictures of your religious belief on your walls. That's the modern equivalent of native rock art. It's not just Indian graffiti. the south exit of the now deep canyon, the road spills out into the highlands of the swell. Here you find one of the more recent parts of the area's history. An old suspension bridge across the San Rafael River still stands as a walking bridge for the modern surrounding campgrounds. It was built in 1935 to provide access to the interior of the swell for grazing. The recently passed John Dingle Jr. Act grandfathered grazing permits, so it's still permitted, but no new grazing permits are being issued. Also, the area has very low possibilities of oil, so oil drilling has been prohibited as well. It basically marked the beginning of the swell being solely as a recreation-focused area. And at the size of Rhode Island, there are plenty of possibilities. From easy car access accessible sites like Buckhorn, to deep wilderness backpacking and canyoneering. This is definitely a place to experience and respect. And now that the pandemic is passing and we're all going out a bit more, I'm definitely looking forward to more exploration of the area. 